What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another season of the KCM. Here we are, season 4 of 2024 with Bisu versus Queen, starting off on Minstrel. We've got a hell of a lineup today, so let's get into it. Alright, pulling up the lineup now, we've got Sharp, Royal Light, Best, Bisu, Shuttle, Queen, Action, and Soul Key. Love to see Soul Key in this lineup, don't you, Shun? Absolutely. I mean, he is our champion, and it's nice to see him representing the Zerg squad. Didn't see him in that finals, unfortunately. I know quite a few people were a little bit salty about that, understand understandably so. But here he is, right here, right now, along with Queen in action, to hopefully represent the Zerg lineup with a little bit more tenacity. There's so much going on in StarCraft right now with the SSL, the PSL, the Collegiate Star League, um, not to mention... Uh, pro, the Pro League as well, um, the Daily Pro League series. So there's just so much happening. It's understandable that there are uh, some conflicting times, some some issues, you know, getting the players together. But uh, I'm glad we've got a good round of pretty much all the best players, especially on the Terran squad. We've got, you know, our round of four players, Sharp, Royal and Light are both two players that could go very deep this season in SSL. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the only, the name that like maybe you could argue isn't so hot on this list is probably Shuttle out of all nine of these players. But other than that, like absolute killers for week one, absolute treat for us. And uh, looks like we're going to have a very quick probe scout confirming that this is going to be a fast overpool build. Nothing crazy out of Queen here. Kind of hard to get away with 11 hatch on a two player map against a Protoss player. Oh, for sure. And it seems like Bisu actually wants to throw down um, a, a forge here. I think he's got to throw down the forge now. It, maybe he was thinking about going for a Nexus here in the natural, but. As soon as he sees that uh, nine pool coming out here from Queen, he's just going to have to get the forge and make sure to get, what do you think here? Single cannon, double cannon. He's going to check and see what pops out, but maybe you start no. two cannons and then cancel one. Well, you never want to have to make two cannons. I mean, if it's a nine pool six ling, you obviously make two cannons, but you don't want to have to make two cannons as a Protoss player. You'll usually just see a singular cannon and a second one added on if things are, get a little bit crazy here. But without like, you know, six lings being made right off the bat, it's just going to be a single cannon with additional probes pulled if needed. Now, I don't know the actual rush distance here. Minstrel is kind of an interesting map in that it is a two player map with a pretty straightforward way to cross like there's two bridges here in the middle right uh, you can probably get across pretty darn quick i'm sure that bisu's mapped it out uh, and that the uh, map makers wouldn't you know set things up so to to totally screw over the protoss so it looks like with the cannon being started uh, before the links pop he will be able to prevent anything from running by and Bisu gets his Nexus down. Everything's pretty normal so far. Queen has his third base uh, on the way as well. And only building two lings here. He's going to be feeling okay. Nice snipe there on the probe. Just picking that off with a drone is very nice. He's going to throw him Hydra Den. He actually like killed, like yeah, he killed that probe right before he would have otherwise thrown down his lair. So uh, uh, lay, uh, an actual layer of uh, mystery here for Bisu. He's not going to know whether this is tactical or if it's going to be that Hydra Den. Yeah, and I think someone like Queen is slightly less on average likely to go for a Hydra bus like this. He's much more likely to go for that Spire play, uh, sorry, Lair play at least. So yeah, just that alone might actually kind of confuse Bisu. You might not be able to sniff this out and it might be too late by the time that he does. Pretty uncharacteristic of Bisu as well to lose that early probe, being a little bit fancy, trying to get some damage on the drones may end up costing him the game here. Has a Stargate on the way. Bisu's been such a killer lately, and he's so good in this matchup. It would be a shame for him to go out to just a Hydra bust here, but this is uh, this is his own fault, right? He should have kept that kept that probe alive at least until the layer starts, or that you know that hundred gas timing. Right. And now he's going to be paying the price for it. Hydra's popping out right away. He's not going to kind of conceal this with a bunch of links to stop the zealots. So 
Beast is probably going to get in here and scout this right away. Yeah, uh, if he actually comes across this map, I don't know. He's sending his zealots back home, so he might not actually see this. This is kind of kind of crazy for Bisu right now. Yeah, he's kind of like playing with fire a little bit because he hasn't got any information whatsoever. I kind of feel like he should press the issue a little bit more, but he also knows that there's a good chance that these zealots get gobbled up by Lings, even if it was a standard game. So he's erring on the side of caution, but that's going to come back to bite him because now he's not even going to see these hydras come out into the center of the board and start to put pressure on. There's, I guess there's a chance that BCU might be able to you know, drill the probes and still be okay, but it's still going to be a very tough hold of just a single cannon and a few zealots lots to soak damage this is not going to be easy Corsair's going to confirm it in just a second here but it might be too late yeah the second cannon starts but the hydra's already here they've got their speed finished and we're gonna see range come down pretty soon oh wait a second losing a hydra at the beginning of this is pretty rough for queen He's going to keep his uh, overlord alive at least but there's a drone coming to the front queen i mean we were talking about how he's not, this is out of his style, this is out of his wheelhouse, so he doesn't really play this very often, he doesn't really go for a lot of Hydra Buzz. But I think you just saw it right there, proof positive that this is not Queen's style, and he's having a hard time executing yeah. this play. Well, that's for sure. There's not the same kind of like finesse that you would usually see out of Queen. He's, he's certainly not as adept at this style as he is uh, the rest of the Zerg arsenal, which is a shame because this is one of the most potent uh, builds in the Zerg's pocket to pull out and the highest win percent potential as well. This this is the stage of the game where the Protoss is at their most volatile, especially with a lack of scouting information like you already managed to secure earlier. So everything was going right for him, but it seems like he's just getting somewhat standard compensation for his opening so he's going to transition it more into like a fake hydra bust after the fact might be able to get the cancel on this upgrade it's going to be very close a few seconds and it's finished he does manage to stop that upgrade plus one has been denied bisu with the double forged follow-up though in the main base he will get those upgrades going albeit quite a bit slower than he would like to and you can see queen with the evo chamber here in the natural has his own plus one rolling along and will be able to match that plus one attack with a plus one attack of his own pretty darn quickly here and has his transition rolling this is a pretty good opener for queen i mean uh, despite a few little bumps in the road early on he's managed to do everything that he wanted to and get his economy rolling behind this so he's got a lot of drones going he's gonna get the spire He's got plenty of hatcheries coming up. Six hatch hydra is going to be the follow-up here. Yeah, and I think it's probably one of the best choices. It does allow him to produce a crazy amount of hydra lists so you can really go into a battle zerg mode for a while and put the pressure back onto the pros player as soon as possible. Bisu still relegated to his uh, age-old style of just getting as many speed lots out as possible. If he can keep the Hydras in small enough number before they gain a critical mass, he will be able to keep the assault on. There is a sunken behind this that's currently morphing. If he can get a good Sim City to block these uh, Zealots, they won't want to come in here though. As you can see, very hesitant to commit to an attack because if the Zealots get in there and they get locked in, they can all just die and you don't have this map pressure anymore. So it's good to keep these Zealots as active as possible. And now he's going to go onto this top uh, sunken that's trying to get set up here and he's actually got a lot of damage onto it already and there's not a lot of hydras here just yet he might get at the very least get the kill on this sunken maybe a couple of drones but honestly i think this is still going pretty reasonably well for queen all things considered i thought that queen was going to take quite a bit more damage but good reaction by him pulling the hydras out of the natural immediately to assist at this third base the sunken colony was not in the greatest position it was pretty easy to surround in that spot yeah. and so it goes down very very quick but his clean response and not really any overlord damage in the natural means his position is looking better and better his ability to drone up a little bit more is coming through now he's got lurkers on the way so he's not really worried about getting bowled over by zealots anymore and he can bump his way up to that the 45 drone count get his fourth base online and start to go into his hive here pretty soon yeah i like that he's playing wide first he's getting this fourth base up and running right here right now and that, and he'll, he'll be able to stay on battle zerg to keep um bisu at bay while transitioning into that hive 
There is a Dark Templar making its way um, up to this uh, hatchery, but there is a Lurker and Overlord already in position, so I don't think Bisu's going to be able to get the cancel on this hatchery or anything like that. Ooh, maybe catching this Corsair. That's a great pickup for Queen. Like any, any damage to Bisu's gas bank right now and denial of uh, scouting potential is pretty huge. And Bisu's going for his, like, kind of stylistic, like, four Templar into uh, the rest of his production. Some players are more like that than others. Rain, for example, will always do this kind of style where he'll get four Templars out and then go back into unit production. But he'd be more likely to go for a way Dragoon denser army. Whereas Bisu, like I was saying before, he's a much more traditionalist. He's going to make way more Zealots than your uh, much more newer tier Protoss players would. If you did saw that in the main base bisu was actually making a bunch of corsairs but only representing that he had built one look he's got three in there looks like he stopped yeah. that production now but i think he was expecting a mutilus transition from queen it's been so, right. so popular recently to switch into mutas and maintain like a massive hydralis force try to suddenly surprise the protoss player with that uh muta switch and then uh, you know, pick off all the Templar, overwhelm with Hydra. Bisu trying to preempt that by continuing to build Corsairs rather than just switching fully on into Templar. But this is a lurker play from Queen, and you know, he's going to have a massive ground army holding off and defending four bases, going into that Hive Tech transition, and these Corsairs probably not going to get too much done. I, I mean, this is looking really good for Queen. He's already got four bases mining, uh, while um, Bisu is like only just now securing his third. And the fact that he's gotten away with saturating all four bases uh, without really much pressure being dealt to him, this is going to set him up really nicely for the mid to late phase. We see a big, large move out coming into this northern vector. The scout, the, the Scourge is actually going to see that moving. It's almost like Bisu wanted him to scout that he's coming up here for some reason. But there's already a pretty big fortification up here. Three lurkers, a couple of sunken's on the way, and additional Zerg forces now being ushered up into this northeast quadrant. I don't think BC is going to want to come into that without heavy Dragoon support, that's for sure. Coming forward just to trade maybe might be the right choice here. He's moving up towards this high ground. Minstrel is an interesting map with quite a few different attack vectors that you can choose from. Oh, can he get the Scourge connections on the Observers? Almost gets that second one. But with only one Observer left, is there any chance that Bisu can push through here? Not with the Scourge available. He's going to go ahead and dive upon that. And pushing up this ramp now is going to cost too many storms. I think that it's time for Bisu to head back and we'd consider taking a fourth base in the bottom left. He still has one remaining observer up here, actually, so I guess he could still skirmish a little bit longer. Oh, I wonder if I think Queen is thinking soon, about maybe not um, your push just playing purely. The observer here. Coming forward, helping him to break through this high ground. Can he actually get through this lurker contain? There's not enough dragoons here, I feel, and Hydras are now going to come down with the uh, last observer being sniped. He's actually going to try and push down the ramp. This might be a bit of a mistake, but... It's not that much of an overextension, just one lurker coming down here, getting stormed to death. Plus two, plus two is done for Bisu. He's trying to break these positions, but Queen looking solid on every front. He's going to have Defilers out very, very soon. Yeah, um, Bisu's getting a fourth base online. So, I mean, he's kind of keeping up a little bit with the economic curve of the game. But at the moment, I, I like Queen. I'm kind of favoring Queen more and more. The, um, and as soon as these Defilers become online, like, his army's just going to get even scarier. I mean, Crackling's already pretty scary in of itself. But with the Plague, it just it kind of makes the links kind of go a little bit out of control. And uh, until super late game, when, like, there's tons of Reavers and Archons, it's kind of the, the Zerg's world's to take advantage of. Well, I see Queen's plan for the future here. He wants to take a couple of different bases, I think, that sort of cover each other. If you take 12 o'clock and then this base that's just north of our screenshot right now, the uh, one with the minerals facing into one of these attack paths, uh, you can yeah. cover them both at the same time by only covering two separate lanes. Now, Bisu is attacking here into the natural, but there's so much available to actually fight him. This is a lot of zealots pushing into this lurker, though, and with only one lurker there, it's not going to be enough to hold. I don't think we've got plus two armor, so the links are not going to trade that well. A lot of lurkers coming down here right now. 
They're all gonna run into these storms though. The storm here is insane. That's like six lurkers stacked up on top of each other and he's pushing right in towards the natural. I don't think Beast is gonna break through and actually win here, but he just cleared out so many lurkers, took such an efficient trade. I think he's gonna start to take control of this game a little bit more. I mean, uh, unless we can get a lot of compensation by killing these these units on the exit, uh, it doesn't look like Queen's going to secure that many kills. That did look pretty devastating. That's like one of the, the main things you want to do as Protoss. You just want to like kind of force the Zerg to relocate and unborrow and reborrow their lurkers. They'll almost always be stacked up way more than they were originally. If you attack into an already fortified position, they'll be spread out nicely like he's doing right here. But when you unborrow them and move them into position, you'll get like two, three, four lurkers in one storm. And just forcing the Zerg to keep moving around the map will guarantee you those kinds of efficient trades. Oh, look at this. Bisu just pulling Queen left and right, forcing him into bad positions over and over again. And he's actually going to end up losing this hatchery over here. Was hoping to have this as his fifth base, but has another hatchery over at the 12 o'clock. He also has Dark Swarm here now. And more lurkers coming forward to assist this position. He might be able to hold on to this, but Bizu can always rotate up towards the 12. There's no defense over there. And it'll be a little bit tough for Queen to get up there to actually defend that. Um, with how far split he's been and how many lurkers he's lost so far. He's yeah. a little bit low on those static defenses and Bisu going to keep trying to overwhelm him, trying to you know pull him to and fro and get him into a bad position. There's the first plague coming out. It's a shame that Bisu's red here. It's a little bit hard to tell what units have been plagued, but these plagues are going to start to chain and this is where Queen can start to take control of the game. Uh, resting it back from Bisu's hands. Yeah, I imagine Bisu's going to want to start to go into Reavers here any moment. There's the first Reaver. I imagine we're going to see many more of those be made this game. Uh, interesting enough, taking the Nexus on the inside of that expansion towards the south to make it a little bit easier to defend and harder to harass. But it looks like Queen's still going to be going on this southern vector of attack, maybe trying to upset this expansion attempt right here right now before those cannons come online. Yeah, going on the aggressive now. Queen getting on top of these cannons. One Reaver going to pop out. Cleans up most of the lings. Looks like he should be able to keep this shuttle alive with shuttle speed. It's not going to be too much of a problem. We were seeing just a moment ago, Queen trying to rotate units over to the 12 o'clock is pretty tough on this map. You have to go between the mineral patch and the wall there. It's a very, very small gap. So a lot of lurkers were getting uh, clogged up in that area. But that yeah. actually could come into into play in a huge way if Bisu starts bouncing between these two bases. Um, and there's not enough to cover, you know, to, to, to stop the entirety of the force with just half of the army here of Queen. Well, well Go ahead. Well, I really feel like if this map gets split in half, it's very Protoss favored. With the lanes of attack as they are, it's just Reavers have so much trade efficiency in the mid to late phases. And I, like we're seeing now, BC already starting to utilize these as siege units. And I can't blame him. This is probably one of the best unit choices. Plague will be a great tool in trying to keep Bisu at bay here, but it may not be enough. We, we, we already saw in previous PVZs on this map how crazy value Protoss can get in certain situations and funnels. And it might be an, a nightmare situation for Queen to have to navigate. If Bisu can keep the concentration of conflicts in these tight lanes, beautiful storms going on some of these uh, units, Queen just be trying to storm dodge as much as he can. And he's hoping that Bisu will like just run away and not commit to the attack. But um, Bisu's just going to slowly clean up all of the lurkers and eventually get the kill on this hatchery as well. Ooh, Hydra's just popping out barely at the last moment here, but the Dark Swarm working against Queen now, keeping these dragons safe from the Hydralis fire. The Reaver here at the back is super, super low. He's finally going to dive on that. He picks that off and he, you know, eliminates most of the army here, but the fact remains he lost that hatchery. Luckily, he does have that fifth base, though, just below that uh, 12 o'clock position here. It's only a mineral. It's just a mineral only, but it is going to tide him over for a little bit. He has quite a few bases still mining. Nothing's really mined out just yet. Even the main base still has a, a few patches there, but he does need to get the sixth base online and need to prevent the uh, Protoss player from growing any further because Bisu is going to start to stretch out even more. He's got Reavers here, I think, in this shuttle. 
queen gonna come over here and start to harass but he just doesn't have a big enough army to actually break any of these yeah. locations he's just gonna be harassing here trying to pick off these probes and prevent this six o'clock base from going down we're getting very close to a map split though now Shun. yeah it's, it's i'm a little bit worried for queen i really also wish he would start to send um some defilers on these attack vectors like a defiler help assisting with some plagues and dark swarm at these bases towards the south would probably prove somewhat fruitful and allow him to get some kind of efficiency going but as it stands it looks like he's going to be relegated to just macroing up but it's so hard to leverage your max zerg army and just terms of moving it around the map, much less in these tight little corridors that Bisu will try to exploit here. Ooh, those are some storms. This is, uh, once again, Bisu pushing in towards the natural. He's going to lose the shuttle, but he keeps the Reaver alive here on the ground. Looks like we don't plague with this one defiler, and Bisu actually shoving into the natural, kind of surprising queen here with this move. This is the problem with the map. Minstrel, so many different attack vectors, so many different lanes to cover in queen it seems like he's missed one of these lanes he's trying to bring his lurkers back but there's that oh, gap the between the uh, minerals and walls exactly what i was talking about before trying to uh, relocate your army here is just so tough queen having a really hard time doing that he's gonna bring up a big army from the <gasps> flank here but the storm's getting thrown down on everything so efficient here for bisu this reaver is getting insane damage these Archons are cleaning up everything, and I think this might be lights out. Queen is just falling apart. Yeah, this is looking bad news for the Matriarch here. Already the Zerg squad looking a little bit shaky after that shambles of a finals. It's not looking good. GG, Queen's going to tap out early. And now who are the Terran squad going to be trying to send out to deal with? Bisu, who's looking monstrous in PvT. It's going to be Sharp, Royal, or Light going into the next game here. Sharp going to be sent out here versus Bisu. Pretty interesting choice for the Terran squad. Um, Sharp, incredibly skilled. Uh as we've seen in the previous SSL or the ASL excuse me making it into the round of four super impressed with his growth overall in the past year or so uh, but here's a chance for him to prove himself before we go into this current season he's gotta show us that he is uh, worthy of that round of 16 seed that he managed to accomplish last season right well, he's had some pretty good performances recently i have to say like he's on the good trajectory that's for sure um i'm, I'm rooting for him as well i've got a little bit of a soft spot for sharp in my heart that's for certain yeah absolutely he's a great guy really really awesome player and a tvp specialist wouldn't you agree yeah yeah and, and kind of like you know has his own style in, entirely and has, has so much confidence when, when he plays as well so i'm really hoping to to see that mimicked here uh, he hasn't elected to go for any early gas here so he, he's instead going to be going for a bit more of an economic opening and it is, is radion so very long rush distances here as well to consider so maybe wanting to go for a more economic choice and get that 15 cc or something going the very standard map here, Radeon. They send out Sharp to deal with Bisu. What's he got in his back pocket? It seems like he wants to go for a gasless fast expand build. And with that CC coming down, we'll have a pretty good position. If he can hold off whatever aggression comes out of Bisu here. Bisu looks to be going for a very standard play, but... We'll see if he throws down his robo first before range or if he wants to just go into that range and put a little pressure on the bunker at the front here in this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Is it going to be like a little one base pressure build here and just go straight into robo and kind of do a little bit old school proto shenanigans or if it's just going to be that range? I haven't seen anything spent for gas yet. Bisu might just throw down this nexus right here right now. There we go. You might see the robo as a follow up here. I think that's pretty likely just saving up money right now. He's only built one dragoon and sending out the probe finally on the map to go scout sharp out. It's a little bit of a ballsy maneuver here for Bisu, considering how aggressive Sharp is and how often he wants to go for like the fastest possible factory and try to put pressure on with a vulture. Yeah, in a way, he's kind of called Sharp's bluff because we will be seeing a faster command center out of him instead. 
and will be a range before Robo at the very least, so would have a fairly fast tech on his Dragoons to hold off some of the earlier push timings of Terran. Yeah, I think this is due to the fact that he hasn't gotten the full scout yet. If he saw the, if he saw the the command center, I think he would prefer to get the the robo out sooner. Yeah, but yeah, probably. He got a little bit frightened by that uh, move out of Marines, just blocking his scout. He thought maybe something aggressive might be coming out of Sharp, and just being completely safe decides to throw down the range first now getting the robo here over in the main and sharp actually going to scout everything so this is really huge. nice spot here for sharp with yeah. the opener and this scout i mean he is in the exact right position i mean this is right when you need to make your tech choices as terran as well like when you make your academy ebay and what have you is very important so now he can be super greedy not make anything and just make a second refinery and like really min max his build out and delay making the academy and engineering bay for as long as possible yeah he knows it's not that quick robo so scouting here not going to be as important he does throw down the academy We'll get those scanners up and online. Gotta account for the the possibility that there might be some sort of DT play hidden out on the map, right? I mean, the the likelihood yeah. of that really really low. But you know, skipping uh, skipping your detection altogether is just not really an option for these high level Terran players. Absolutely. I mean, it could just be like a delayed weird DT drop build to like throw off the Terran player and he doesn't want to just like die for free to something wonky like that. He wants to kind of like dot his eyes, cross his T's and make sure like, you know, he's got an answer for pretty much everything, even if it's not a perfect answer. At least he's got some playability here. Looks like not paying too much tax on this bunker repair either. Doing some pretty good micro with this tank to kind of guarantee bullying back these dragoons they are kind of shuffling forward threatening a dive onto that tank so he can't be too ballsy with the positioning of this tank but he is kind of trying to bait bisu into losing more and more hit points on those units there's our comm stats coming up now no need to scout with those just yet he knows what's coming here just a bit of a safety uh, for sharp just in case he needs some uh, emergency detection behind this he's gone for it. Uh, his armory his plus one he's only built one scanner he does scan the main a little bit surprised to see him doing that now he's really got no uh detection at all and i don't know what he was expecting to see there maybe some sort of crazy transition you know maybe uh bisu could have cancelled the robo or something like that and gone into something wild he just double checks there in the main Make sure that it's, you know, a few extra gateways and with seeing that gateway count, he's made his decision. He's going to add on a bunch more factories here. Is he going to go for a third or is he actually just going to pull like a six factory timing? I think it might be at the very least a five factory build. Yeah, there's the fifth factory. I think six factories would be an adequate response to what we've seen so far. He hasn't got full information, but I think six factory would be a safe play here. But I think he might be optimized enough to get away with just five and go for a timing push. But Bisu's kind of lined up to deal with that right now. If he adds on a few more gateways soon, which he probably should, he's, he's got a relatively quick third base which is, was kind of necessary. Um, I like that um, Charles being very active in hunting down these observers, uh, but I don't think he's got enough scans to kill all of them. So BC will still be gleaning some pretty big information for the time being. For sure, he sees the factory count here in the main with that observer uh, to the south of Sharp's base. He was really hoping to prevent these observers from getting in at all and seeing the factory count uh you know being really active with those glides trying to hunt down the observers and prevent them from finding that information but bisu does get in there he sees what's coming sharp this doesn't mean it's not going to work but it does make things a little bit easier for bisu he can uh, you know build the correct number of gateways here Right. Make sure he's just got enough to deal with this incoming attack that's going to be uh, on the way in just a moment. Another scan here. He will eventually pick this off, I think. Uh, he's just not quite able to get that. 
Yeah, he does get the observer there in the main. So really being uh, persistent with hunting down these observers. This is very good Terran play because the mine, the value of the mines becomes insanely strong. It just goes up exponentially the more observers you pick off because you know that Beast is going to be having to build shuttles here to try and hold off this attack. Uh, shuttles and Reavers for sure. So yeah. it, it's going to be hard to increment out a few observers in the middle of that. And Sharp managing to sneak, thread the needle through this Protoss army to get some vultures out on the map, see if they can hunt down any probes that we're trying to expand or at the very least keep the, the, the threat of a run by in Bisu's mind. So he kind of has to keep you know eyes on things and can't just run around the map at his leisure anymore. It's like he's still going to be hunting down more and more of these observers, and then Bisu won't know when he's moving out, which is very important as well. Uh, keeping Bisu kind of guessing is going to be one of the Sharp's uh, main advantages right now, because he can just transition into it, an expansion. He doesn't actually have to attack with this five factory. He could just turn this into a third base and secure some map control like he's doing so far. That really does seem to be the play that Sharp's going for. Trying to get this probe, maybe he could get it. A little bit of micro on that might have uh, done the trick, but Sharp a little bit more interested in trying to slip these vultures by. He's actually going to get over here. One cannon. That's a funny setup there from BC. I've never <laughs> seen that before, but that's kind of cute here against a player like Sharp. Wow. Oh, getting into the natural. He'll actually get a bunch of damage here, like four or five probes end up going down. Uh, pretty decent kills there for Sharp, but... Uh, you know, this is not as big of a deal uh, being that we're at 10 minutes 30 at this point. You know, 3-4 probes when you've got 3-4 nexuses, it doesn't really take a lot of time to replace. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it, we saw the command center almost finishing up just now, so it does look like it's going to be a transition into a, a bit more of a turtle play here from Sharp. But Bisu's already ahead of that curve, is trying to come down here and expand. I like the activity of the vultures, though. He always somehow manages to find some value with them, but he hasn't found his trademark amount of value this game with them, only doing a tiny dent into the economic powerhouse of Bisu. But it looks like they might be able to slip in yet again, at least one will, and the other two soon to follow. This could be a little bit more damage than we saw just a moment ago. Quite a few more probes may fall here. These sellers will take a little bit of time to clean up those vultures, and Bisu's already on the counter offensive, though. Not a lot of tanks and vultures here to soak up these forces, and a nice little uh, zealot bomb on as well to help break apart these tank lines. Additional reinforcements coming up from this other attack vector as well. Bisu's probably going to retreat right now because he's cleaned up enough cost efficiently without really committing too many units, but he is losing a little bit of dragoons to the bugginess of the move movement of the, the units here at least, so there's some compensation for Sharp, but overall this is looking pretty healthy game for Bisu. Really surprised that Sharp didn't have his uh, the rest of his tanks uh, up there to assist that frontal line, because uh, he ended up losing quite a few tanks without, um, without trading very efficiently. Oh my god, he's going to catch so many probes right here. Oh man, this is a Big boon. How does he do it? Sharp. I don't know how he's always getting in and killing off probes every single time, but managing to catch Bisu on the transfer there, he gets a huge compensation. However, 12 minutes in, still no third base. Things are not yeah. looking very good for Sharp if he can't get this online, like right now. Yeah, Bisu's done a lot of inadvertent, sorry, indirect damage to um, Sharp by just having his army positioned out here, really slowing him down and securing this. It's a bit of an awkward third to take. It's a long rush distance down from your natural expansion to this little pocket of a third base. Finally able to do it and clean up these units, but at a pretty hefty cost of both time and units. Finally going to be able to land this command center, but it is a little bit slow. Ended up losing like four or five tanks there. Pretty good control yeah. overall from Bisu, getting those shots off with the Reaver the very end there, grabbing that one last tank with a final phase disruption shot from that Dragoon. Pretty decent play from him to just delay things even further and by killing the tanks, delay the push that Sharp is eventually going to try and move out with. Sharp still being annoying with these vultures, but he just hasn't gotten enough damage, I think, to slow down Bisu to the point where 
Uh, his push is going to be, you know, very effective coming up in just a moment. Oh, this drop here. The storms could come down on all the SCVs. Oh my god, he wipes out the entire SCV line. Brutal damage there. Sharp losing way more SCVs than he ever really killed in probes on Bisu's side of the map. Yeah, if only there was a floating eBay there or something, those glass would have been able to mow down that shuttle, but unfortunately, alas, instead he took a lot of SCV deaths and he is transferring some now, but he hasn't got a lot in the tank compared to Bisu, so I'm a little bit worried for him because he's going to have to secure a fourth base in the coming phases of the game, and that might be a little bit difficult for him if he keeps trading at this 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 rate, I mean, Beast is almost maxed out, Sharp's only on 140, so that's like the bare minimum to not just die outright to the Protoss, but uh, it's still kind of like the bare minimum here from Sharp, it's not really enough to come out onto the map and secure this fourth base like he needs to soon. With storms available, probably four Templar in this shuttle. Bisu going to think about pushing right in towards this natural. The position here is pretty good with all the mines in the front. A lot of zealots are going to get wiped out, but here comes the storms. Nice snipes on some of these Templar, picking them off before they can cast their abilities. But there's still even more behind this coming forward dragoons are going to push in towards this natural can he actually hold on it seems like he's going to start to trade pretty efficiently if bisu continues to push here but i mean he's cleared out so many tanks and 99 supply for sharp right now oh wow eight kills two kills and one kill on that drop an insanely good drop here coming in right as all the action was going on on his side of the map. I mean, that's some pretty heavy compensation right there. That does kind of spell a little bit of a different story. I mean, things are still a little bit awkward here for Sharp. He's still on cleanup duty, but honestly, after that big counter drop down here at the 6 o'clock, this kind of crazy damage. Like, uh, this does reset the game a lot. This this might even give um, Sharp a little bit of a tactical edge, and he's almost killing this Nexus. This oh, he's is, trying to make wild. Can he get oh. this? Oh, it's so close. It's so low. 89 health on that. You know that a siege tank shot does 70. So yeah. just a few extra vulture shots and one more siege tank shot would have killed that. Bisu, pretty slow to react. It's very, very rare that you see a single tank, two vulture drop, kill a nexus. Even a two tank drop takes a quite a while to kill a nexus but you know almost losing that pretty rough for bisu he was really focused on breaking sharp uh, with yeah. that one attack in towards the natural it might come back to haunt him i mean he's even getting slowed down in his further expansion endeavors and it's only a few minutes until he's mined out and his main and natural so I think he's already mineral smoothed out of his main because he knows he's going to have mineral smoothing issues. So he's not really mining a lot in his main base right now to try and like smooth things over and keep his engine running for just a few more ticks to kind of restabilize, get this uh, bottom right quadrant of the map secured, maybe get some gateways positioned down there as well and go into the late game. But Sharp's done a great job of kind of just flipping the table over. Another storm drop potential coming in here on this base though. A lot of SCVs could fall. Oh no, floating building once again for Sharp. He's really missing that key part of the puzzle here to prevent the drops from coming in and just dealing massive damage. While this storm drop didn't deal nearly as much, Sharp much quicker on the response, but he really needs to get something over that area to to, to get some vision going. He's got some sort of floating building above Beast's natural, but it yeah. would be much better served being a little closer uh, to his his third base to just give him a little bit of that advance notice. Is this a double tank drop? Is he actually going to go for the snipe here on this he might. Uh, Nexus? If those units move away, he might actually go for it. Bisu with quite a few zealots there. He should actually be able to stop uh, two, two tanks from actually killing. It's actually one tank and two vultures. This is an awesome play from Sharp. Surprised he didn't drop this a little bit closer to the ramp to make things a little harder for the dragoons to get in here and clear this, but it's still a great move. He's going to buy a lot of time over here. He's going to force a huge headache uh, onto Bisu trying to clear this up. And two more drops coming in here. He finally has a, a, a vessel over this high ground. He's got some sort of vision going. 
He's gonna lose a few workers, but this is still not much damage from Bisu. Dude, Sharp is doing it right now. He's making it happen. Yeah. This is kind of wild saying, honestly. Like, absolute madman Sharp here. Firing on all cylinders, trying to make it work. I'm really impressed with the little counter plays with the vultures. Sniping high templars, laying mines, clearing out as much of the zealots as possible, getting as much valuable get as much value for those mineral only units as he can and looking at the supplies right now it's looking pretty good for sharp he's only behind like 20 supply right now this is much more reasonable two one upgrades on these tanks two one upgrades for uh, bisu's armies as well so all things considered like sharp's doing great in the relative power scale right now he's kind of reset uh, the situation for himself into a much more playable um, uh, state of affairs that he can now come into this rally point area of bisu and really start to put the pressure on yeah he's Getting right in there. Not much Bisu can do about this right now. He's got a force isolated over towards the bottom right. He's going to move that forward now. Try to cut off reinforcements here and wait for a few more units to increment out of the main and natural before trying to break this. However, Sharp is actually going to kill the third while this is all taking place. He's losing a shuttle as well. One of those shuttles goes down. I hope that wasn't the Templar shuttle. Because that would yeah. spell disaster for Bisu right now. He ac absolutely needs some Templar in this army to deal with the heavily upgraded mech and, you know, just, just a few Zealot bombs and a, a bunch of gateway units. It's not going to cut it. Here we go. It's going to move out from the natural, drop in some Zealots, casting some storms. Great D-Matrix there on the front. Two D-Matrix, in fact, just buy time with these tanks while he brings forward more reinforcements. Sharp is going to lose this fight, it looks like, but... How much damage has been done here? Bisu lost his base in the center left, and he lost every probe at that location. Sharp just about even on supply here, and he's still got quite a few tanks out on Bisu's side of the map. Yeah, there was a moment of weakness there for Sharp. He was spread a little bit thin, but Bisu was unable to isolate enough of those pockets of Terran units to clean them up. And now Sharp has got his army much more consolidated in the center of the board with a, not really that much of a supply deficit as well. Closing the gap on Bisu slowly but surely, just trailing behind by 12 or so supply. Another storm drop coming into the third base, though, it looks like. Oh, the storm could be huge. Pretty good dodge there. Pretty decent dodge. Keeps most of those alive at least like one or two scvs go down but all those scvs are now deeply deeply hurt in the red sharp next storm drop is going to be devastating if bisu manages to get in he really needs to get some high ground vision once again and make sure that he blocks that uh 12 o'clock very vulnerable here too uh, sharp is playing a great game of keep away right now he's making sure that he doesn't take too much damage and slowly but surely building up into a, a army that I don't think can be denied. Bisu just three supply ahead of Sharp right now. He's having a hard time. Here comes that drop going towards the 12 o'clock. Templar not quite sniped in time. Quite a few SCVs go down. Not the huge damage that Bisu was looking for, but he's slowing down that economy once again. Yeah, it's a step in the right direction. Exactly what you should be doing as the Protoss player right now. Just siphoning off as much of the Terran economy as you possibly can. He's keeping the supply gap a little bit more favorable now. Still about 20 uh, recently. It was very close to even being a sharp lead here. So Bisu is at danger of letting Sharp run away with the game. So it's very imperative that he keeps the constant pressure of these storm drops going. He has no recalls available to him. So storm drops are kind of critical in keeping the Terran from growing too much here sharp is intent on preventing the storm drop from coming in and dealing even more damage but he's got like all of his army over there in that uh, fourth base wow hot pickup on these templar keeping all of them alive sharp was looking for some damage there trying to get in and uh, pick off a few templar get some of those units taken care of but not able to make it happen. Wraith comes out. Finally, Sharp will be able to leave this 12 o'clock with his army uh, safely. Uh, I was a little bit afraid he was going to end up getting caught up there with the uh, Bisu's army coming forward. And then, you know, everything being on that high ground would be really, really tough uh, to take a fight. Now, actually, it, it, it is still going to happen. Big storms here in the middle of this army. A lot of this stuff just sitting on high ground, not really able to be brought to the, for to the forefront. 
So many vultures getting caught up in these storms as well. And Sharp not taking the best trade right now. Dropping again below 100 supply. We're at 99. This is such a scrappy game. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But the supplies are still in dead even right now. Bisu just barely ahead by 10 supplies. So all things considered, this is maybe a little bit Sharp favored. The problem is, is that Bisu does have an additional base in the bottom right churning away. So if Bisu can keep growing while well, keeping um, Sharp locked on this four base, eventually Eventually, Bisu should race ahead, but if the map does get divided into half, which is looking like it might might do, this will be an inevitable sharp victory. I'm feeling. Oh man, great that's, that's scan! scan was crazy. Great scan. I think he saw the shuttle moving forward with that building that he's got floating over Bisu's natural, but still, really good reaction time from Sharp there. Bisu going to be pushed away with these probes. It's just constant harassment. Another snipe on some Templar over at the natural. Just getting over here, seeing what damage he can do with the small amounts of units that he's brought forward. Great mines there as well, dealing so much damage to these uh, zealots. I know not a huge amount of them were actually killed, but softening all these up is going to make it so much harder for Bisu to break any positions. Yeah, no, this is a really great play from Sharp. I, I love that Bisu's being relentless with the storm drop. That's exactly what he needs to do. He might get a fair few SCVs here. He's doing a pretty good job of dancing these around. The storm dodging has been pretty impeccable with these SCVs most of the game. He has lost quite a lot, but he has also mitigated a lot of potential losses as well. So pretty good from Sharp, all things considered. And the game state still kind of remaining the same. So I think if Shark would just hang on a little bit longer and start to split the map in half, he's got this. Finally, he brought that building back uh, over his third base. <laughs> I was waiting for that for so long. <laughs> just get that yeah. high ground vision with, you know, two turrets and two goliaths there. You're going to be able to kill the uh, shuttle like right as it's coming in. They might be able to drop like one unit, but... Uh, more than likely, you're just going to lose everything. Nice storms here. Four tanks get caught up in that storm. So much damage, but I think he should be okay as long as he repairs those up. He won't, yeah. will, won't yeah. lose those units. And yeah, he's got to get that repair. These are so low. That was an insanely good storm from Bisu. Well, honestly, like Bisu would be all over Sharp right now if it wasn't for the fact that Sharp was constantly diving these vultures in and sniping Templars and forcing storms over and over again. So it has really dried up the utility that Bisu has available. But uh, it's still taking its toll on Sharp. He's been denied mining now at this base for a little bit. So Bisu's starting to find some indirect damage here, but hasn't been able to grow himself yet. Yeah, he's got the map nearly split in half now. Sharp thinking about taking a base in the top right. I, I see. Oh, the shuttle's going to go down. Nice, nice snipe there. Getting rid of that utility unit. Um, these storms that were available in that shuttle. We don't know how many Templar were there, but at least one. We know for sure. No. Sharp pushing out towards the middle now. Is he going to try and take this position, or is he just going to try and push straight across the map? He's got to take this fight very carefully. He's about 30 supply down, and this is probably the last army that he can put together. If this one goes down, I mean, he's going to be mining off of one base here pretty soon. He's yeah. got to either secure but, the top right or, you know, deal a critical blow to Bisu. But, but it's a little bit awkward for Bisu, though, because he has no gateways in the bottom right. So he has to, at all costs, keep his army fluid and not allow um, Sharp to contain his rally point here. So Bisu may be forced to fight head on with Sharp before he gets into position to contain the rally point. Another storm a drop attempt on the natural third. Luckily, he's got this floating building here now to always have a little bit of a heads up against that. Does snipe the shuttle of only losing like two or so SCVs. So he's doing a pretty good job of mitigating further damage from that. But bringing his entire army back to clean this up is a little bit questionable. Well, it's going to move back towards the middle. But yeah, I definitely agree with you. Kind of questionable decision making there from Sharp. I thought he was going to push up towards his natural a little bit quicker. He does have the uh, vultures over here laying mines next to the natural. But it seems like he's made his decision. Going to switch into taking a base in the top right. He's really spreading things out now. Taking over the middle of the map and looking to secure another base. A great mine connection there just a moment ago, killing off quite a few vultures. 
But Sharp is getting a lot of damage going in this natural, just constantly harassing this rally point. It's been amazing to watch Sharp so, you know, formulaic, but also kind of unique in the way that he just constantly harasses. Drop here on top of these tanks. Big EMP goes off on one of those Templar. He picks off that other Templar at the top side. A couple more storms do go down, but this is way less storm then Bisu had prepared for this fight. Sharp actually going to get away with a lot here, pulling forward even more tanks now. Oh, wow. All right, both those tanks just exploded there, but Sharp's going to continue to push forward. He's may end up breaking this bottom right-hand corner. He's running out of money, though. Almost nothing yeah. left over at this third base. Well, he's got to get something done right here, right now. He's not elected to expand yet. Bisu is starting to grow more himself, taking this bottom right natural third, but he certainly can win the game in the next few moments here. There's not a lot of infantry left for Bisu. He can only attack from one single vector right now, and now there's a choke point for Sharp to defend. No gateways in this bottom right quadrant at all for Bisu to storm from the high ground, which is usually the natural advantage of Protoss players in this these late game setups, but nothing like that to speak of here from Bisu, so it's going to be very difficult for him to dislodge this Terran army now that it's in position to lay siege to this bottom right. Coming forward with a couple of observers, some dragoons and a Templar trying to do some sort of counter-attacking here. Bisu going to move through the middle of the map as Sharp takes out bottom right. The trade here could be, you know, 12 o'clock. Like, he would be okay, actually, Bisu would be if he could trade out 12 o'clock for the space down here. He can't be losing the base on the high ground though he really doesn't have too much over there maybe some templars still in that shuttle to make it difficult on sharp as he comes up that ramp but i mean this is looking very good for sharp right now ahead in supply for maybe the first time this game just a couple of tanks over here moved into position to try and pick off this one nexus they're gonna get split off and killed there were not many probes at this base so not a very worthwhile attack for Sharp to actually go in over there. And now these three tanks are isolated. I think Beast is going to clear everything. He lost some probes. Yeah. He lost the Nexus. But he's still got one Nexus over here. And Sharp still doesn't have another base going. Uh, yeah, and he's cleaning up these Terran units pretty efficiently as well. So it's a little bit of a weird situation Sharp put himself in. He has spread himself a little bit too thinly here, I fear. Uh, I guess he's still not out of the game at the moment, but with having a fourth base online, he's now going to be relegated to just one base worth of mining, while Bisu is going to be moving to two, so Bisu will be having a small edge over him. Oh, he might be able to catch this probe train. Might be a little bit damaged here. EMP goes down on the Archon to help make short work of that. So only a few additional Dragoons here. Two of them are already low HP. These Vultures will kill this very quickly and maybe clean up all these probes. And this drop's getting shut down in the 12 o'clock. So this is probably one of the best case scenarios for Sharp now. Wow, that was great play from Sharp. I don't know how he picked up on that but he actually got the moving shot going with the wraith and no damage can be done at 12 o'clock gg sharp takes it a nail biter game number two but taren putting one on the board okay i was a little tired going into this but that was an adrenaline shot of a game and maybe a wake up call to bisu you cannot sleep on sharp Gotta remind them all, the entire Protoss uh, lineup there. Looking to Sharp like, wow, this guy, even when he's pushed to the very edge, he is so scary with his control, his decision-making, his aggression. Really, really uh, outstanding play from Sharp in that last one. Yeah, I mean, really impressive stuff from him. I would love to see more from him at live events as well. This guy could really go far. I hope he keeps his um love for the game going um it didn't seem like he was too keen on like sticking it out for too long it seemed like he was considering just like making one or two good runs at it to see if he can do well in the air sale and then call it quits but i hope he doesn't do that i hope he sticks with it and continues on because he's on a great trajectory right now and going for an eight racks against action this is by no means an all-in he's gonna make a wall in behind this and float the barracks back afterwards but we'll be putting on some pressure and if action is going to be 12 hatching like it looks like he will if he can kill just two or three drones here could spell an early disaster for action Absolutely. Action's going to get his overlord uh, into position pretty quickly. So he will figure out 
well, what's coming here in just a moment. Uh, this can still do a lot of damage, though. What's the follow-up going to be from Sharp? Because I have seen several different methods of following this up. With the wall in, it stands to reason he may just go into a uh, one rack fast expand follow-up. Um, but he could take the gas here. Kind of get, get creative. Try to go for a vulture or something. Looks like action cancels his extractor, realizing he's about to be under a lot of pressure. He's going to have to pull drones. Uh, could end up losing some of those as well. So no need for the gas early just now. He's going to instead uh, pull a bunch of drones and wait for that. Uh, so the uh, spawning pool to finish up so he can get some lings out. How many drones do we have? Six. Just six so far. A couple more coming down the ramp, I think, just now. Going up to seven. Can he get this around on this marine? Pretty good pull so far. He's getting this around. Can he get any shots off? Okay, no moving shot so far. Does get the surround though. Pulls back one of the drones. Looks like that one does get picked off. Two drones going down. Third drone falls. Okay, it's still within the parameters of what's acceptable here for action, but it's starting to get a little bit rough. Did he make lings or did he make drones behind this? Because if he made all drones and he only lost three, I mean, action is going to be in a great spot. Drones pop. This is a very good spot for action now. Yeah, um, usually using three puts the Terran player in a little bit of an edge, assuming you were investing your lava into some lings as well. But if you're making pure drones and you only lost three, then actually it's a little bit of uh, a favorite towards the Zerg, maybe ever so slightly. But he's coming back in for round two, the naked marine push. There's only four lings. Two of them aren't uh, linked up though, so we'll have a small window maybe here to pressure. But I think he's um, kind of doubting himself, not wanting to commit here because uh, it's a little bit of a micro intensive thing to win he has got one scv to war but he might better get one or two drones here in the naturals could be huge one okay he only gets the one drone he's gonna go behind the minerals now setting up in a pretty good position he can try to build a bunker here to just cut off a surface area and he does he's got the bunker going uh links are gonna go straight across the map there's the wall in is not complete right now and there's no bunker here in the natural okay he turns around with the links he's gonna come back oh man action waffling here a little bit and it's gonna cost him pretty dearly this bunker is done four marines inside and it's in range of the hatchery this is a De de devastating position this really hurts action he's losing so much mining time at the natural he eventually i think will clean clean this right he's gonna get a bunch of links out he will kill this but sharp is getting such a big edge it's, out of this it's really awkward though like he doesn't even get a good surround on the bunker like it's really inefficient how he has to clean this up it, honestly like i'm really impressed by sharp that he like managed to keep his cool because having the, the decision making to go through this is not easy and actually usually pretty good in these low economy situations he's getting pretty good surround on this bunker but like i said because of this mineral patch blocking it's not an efficient surround so the marines trade a little bit better than they would usually so he's had to invest a lot into this to clean this up and as a result his economy is in even worse shape than it was not a lot of drones here man this is not looking good actions hatchery below 300 hp it is bleeding and the follow-up play from Sharp might just be too much to handle. Action yeah. gonna pop out Hatchery's some mutas, and he's he needs to get something done with these mutas, man. I hope so because my heart's bleeding like that hatchery right now for the Zerg squad. Yeah, the Zerg squad is having a really rough time. Of course, we do have Soul Key, maybe the the clincher here. He might be able to make something happen, but a lot is gonna be resting on his shoulders if Action already gets taken out. Yeah. He's going to clean up this SCV scale. Has got a third base on the way in this natural on the top right, but a lot of damage is taken early on. And now he's got to worry about this marine pressure, and he doesn't want to make sunkens right now. He's already behind the economic curve of the game. He's only got one sunken to defend. Spy's not even finished yet. Scans and sees the good news. So now a lot of pressure is going to be coming out from Sharp, and he will be relegated to trying to hold this off by making as many Zerglings as possible. But it's not going to be enough. I think he's going to bust through his own. Oh, man. So much damage on that. It instantly goes down. Ling's going to hit from multiple sides, but they're not uh, hitting at the same time. And only a couple of Marines end up dying. Action is done, man. Sharp's done it. What? Great takedown here. 
I mean, he held off the bunker, the, the eight racks so well, but just not having the links in position, how, it, it, it kind of blows me away, actually, that Action would make a mistake like that. You know, chasing the uh, SCV in the main base with all of his links. He had like eight, seven, eight links in the main chasing one SCV, and then the Marines were just able to run in, kill a drone, and get behind the mineral patches. It's so rough. It's yeah, so it's surprising rough. from a player, the qual caliber of action. You just don't expect to see it, man. Yeah, Sharp's just on point today. What can we say? Like, he's going to take take on Shuttle or Best in this next game. He might even be on so much fire that he's going to destroy them as well. Best going to be sent out here to take down Sharp. I like the uh, uh, decision, honestly. It, if Best can... Uh, Best is the guy that I think can make this happen, right? Sharp is so aggressive he's so scary uh in the modern day like best is the man who breaks terran lines he is the he's the great ape he's the bus driver <laughs> he's got his big strong gorilla arms to just wrap around you and crush your little terran bones but this is it's not a typical terran player that he's up against right now sharp is not going to play into the way that best likes to to get his games going right he's going to have to pull out something a little bit different he's going to have to play a little bit unorthodox against the player who plays yeah. unorthodox well we see 11 guests coming out from sharp in this game so he's definitely going to be up to his usual shenanigans of teching up as quickly as possible slightly crisper factory timings and trying to squeeze out some vultures in the early game to kind of get some control over the game state before best can run away with it it's interesting that he wants to go for this play now right on radeon he didn't go for this play um but i would argue that it's it's better to go for a gas's fast expand here rather than radion because you need to control your high ground um i guess sharp yeah. is going to do that in a different way right he's going to get the vulture out super early and with right. the super quick vulture he's going to be able to push everything away uh, i guess it's just a different mentality a different way of thinking uh, with the high ground control being so important he just wants to get the vulture out as quickly as possible to prevent yeah. any damage coming from best yeah, to be fair, the rush distances on Radiant are a little bit longer, so it's harder to abuse that fast factory as well. So maybe some thinking behind that. Nonetheless, I think this is a pretty pretty good choice against Best. I'm not sure how much you know damage he's going to find initially. If this was Nexus first, obviously he'd be able to find some a way of punishing this. But with Best, just you know, oh, he's getting a very, relatively quick um, Nexus here, 17 Nexus cutting a little bit here to squeeze this uh, building out as quickly as possible. He's just going to park a Dragoon, I think, on on the ramp and be pretty okay against this early Vulture. Sharp's invested a bit into getting this out as quickly as possible, so not getting any damage with that is a little bit painful. And the CC is going to come down on high ground now, and it's just a few seconds behind this nexus which is completely acceptable now that he's got map control he can kind of run around and uh, do his vulture stuff get the mines going and all that and uh yeah there's not really too much that best can do about it he's just gonna have the slightly faster nexus and this scv can it actually get in here great block great great block Beautiful. yeah it's really nice to see from best yeah keeping sharp or keeping sharp out of the main base doing what uh, Bisu couldn't there, not allowing him to, you know, cut all the corners and, uh, you know, do whatever he wants with his economy early game. He's going to have to prepare for some sort of, you know, scary play from best. He can't just assume or he can't just know that he's going for a robo. He's got to, uh, you know, make the, the correct play. He's got to make an eBay or something 
so yeah. get an early scout in here to to find out get a get an early com sat something like that well, best best is smart enough to like mix up his build so like sometimes he will just go for a cheesy dt randomly and you have to like account for that you can't just assume he'll you know play his normal style every time he does mix it up enough to like keep you guessing which is what you want to do as a pro game you want to have a few pocket builds you can pull out just to keep your opponent guessing so they can be forced to respect that threat in future games where they're in the dark oh absolutely it's the best players in the world players like uh, soul key hero sharp best these players are so good at playing standard but then they also have incredibly strong uh, sense for when to all in and they throw them in every once in a while to make you second guess uh, whether that kind of play is coming but um sharp here getting mines out everywhere and getting the ebay back at home he's going to be quite safe how long can he delay yep. this third base though because with the speed of that nexus you can bet the best is going to be looking to take his next base here very soon Oh, I imagine so, yeah. It might be like a 6.37 minute at the latest third base here. He's gone for three gate Robo. This is like a very, very safe way of playing Pros versus Terran. So he, he's pretty much safe against most things that could come his way as well. Mm -hmm. So he won't be taking it super early, like a greedy third base, but he knows how safe he will be to take this third base right here, right now. For sure. Oh, he's got to throw that down. Vulture's coming. He gets the Nexus down. Vulture will get the kill on the probe, but not able to deny here. That was a little bit risky of Best to come up with the Dragoons, clear the mine, and then just run away, because that Vulture could have come in and denied the base, slowed him yeah. down by a lot. So yeah, a little I mean, bit risky it, there, but it pays deal. off. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, it slows you down by like 30 seconds, usually a bit more by how long it takes you to actually grab a probe and tell it to get back up there again. It's usually like, you know, a good 40, 40 seconds to a whole minute of slowdown if you do get the snipe on that. And I do love how Sharp is always so super active with his vultures because one small mistake from Best here could spell disaster. He's going to shuffle around back over towards this Nexus here. But uh, it looks like Be Best is doing a good job of trying to isolate these vultures and cut off the paths of retreat. He will be catching these. Nice job boxing these in. There's so many different pathways on this map that Sharp can escape from, but he doesn't have speed just yet on those vultures. And eventually those will get tracked down once speed is done you're gonna see it sharp running around everywhere on this it's such a wide open map in the middle should there's just so much space yeah to ro wrap is. around so many different high ground locations to lay mines it's a really good map for uh, vultures and you know vulture harassment but it's also a great map for drops in the main it's very very difficult for uh, Terran players to hold on uh, to their entire main base and their natural because there's just a ton of high ground surrounding the entirety of the main and you know a complete 180 degree coverage is generally not very efficient when it comes to turrets no no I mean he's got like pretty much like the standard minimal defense that you would you would see like and you can't really expect much else of him. He he could try and like be more active with his defense and commit into making a wraith and making lots of goliaths and be active. But he kind of needs to min-max his build as much as possible right now because he wasn't really greedy in the opening at all. So now he's kind of playing catch up. He's doing okay on the supply end of things. He's got four factories churning away. Inversely, we see the sixth uh, gateway finish up. So they're pretty much even on production. Uh, six gateways to four factories, kind of even. It's, it's roughly 1.5 uh, to one ratio. It's not quite that. It depends on the stage of the, the state of the game and what have you, but it gives you a kind of estimate of where players are at. You need roughly about six factories to line up with nine gateways and what have you. Yeah, the Reaver, the shuttle, um, does play a factor uh, in that calculation, but. Uh, I think you're roughly on point there. We've got just a few dragons here. Thinking about trying to slow down the uh, third base timing for Sharp. Sharp getting the 
Uh, CC going in his main base. He's scouting out around the main to just see if he can find any easy way in to this Terran uh, fortification. But there's plenty of mines everywhere. We've got turrets set up. We've got a tank. I feel like Sharp is not going to take any damage here. And it would be a little bit foolhardy for best to try and poke in there nice snipe on that probe slowing down at the fourth base and it seems yeah. like best is definitely ready to take that with 800 minerals in the bank he's gonna rotate around try to snipe again but it looks like he will be get driven back the speed vultures are out on the map now this is where sharp can really shine second robo on the way so it's gonna be that double robo play from best and this is where best excels right we were talking about it earlier um Best is that that great ape. The, the strength of the great ape comes from his great timing, his uh, fantastic macro, to where he can just get just enough units, just enough mass to bust through a position that a Terran player tries to take uh, in this mid game. He is so good at making that happen, even when the Terran position looks unbreakable. Even yeah. when, you know, everything's kind of gone right for the Terran player, it still seems like Bess can can bust through. But look at this, he's made a mistake. This is, a, <laughs> this is an uncharacteristic mistake from Best, putting his gateway a little bit too close there. It's a bit of a new map, so it's understandable. But, you know, any Dragoons that pop out of that gateway, he's going to have to remember to only make Zealots there from now on. Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, Sharp Sim City a little bit more on point on this map. Going to be trying to come in and get a couple of probe kills. Not really finding a lot for his effort, but I can't really blame that. Dragoon kind of comes into play and kills the Vulture, though. So he kind of served his purpose, right? He's acting as like point defense for that expansion a little bit there, I guess, some value. Here comes a very big poor man's recall getting set up on this vertical vector, though, on the left-hand side of the map. Trying to come into the main base with a lot more tenacity, maybe. This is what I was expecting actually from best uh, on this map it's just so hard like i was saying to cover all the angles and i mean there's a lot of turrets in here there's a lot of mines as well and the sc or the the supply depot setup is scary oh my god he's got a storm in here too the storm i was not expecting oh my god what? Oh my god! Eight kills! Oh shit! That was this so much damage! Yeah, I mean, even though he cleaned up the drop, it still did a lot of damage and traded a lot of units off as well. Pretty high value uh, for his poor man's recoil into the main base. And he's also putting a little bit of pressure on at the front as well with his Dragoons. So really well executed attack there. Sharp is going to have a small supply edge, though, after the inefficient trades, um, after the fact of all those SCVs going down. But it kind of doesn't really tell the full story, though, even though the supplies look pretty sharp favored. He lost so many SCVs uh, with that, so he's very armed heavy right now whereas best is gonna have a bit of a better minerals moving to work with securing his fifth base right now is it time, a little bit is it time for an attack from sharp i mean I he's mean, got an I army he... advantage for sure right now he lost so many probes it's not gonna actually start to affect his army size here for a little bit like if he waits well, he... he's gonna fall behind an army for sure but if he goes right now there's a chance that you know, that attack could fail. Maybe he would fall apart, but I feel like it's the well, best chance he's got. Well, it is maybe one of the best chances he's got. The problem is, is that he doesn't know the exact state of the game, and he's worried that if he pushes, like, there's so many ways of getting his army, like, cut off or surrounded or whatever. It's just, a lot of things can go wrong while pushing, so he probably feels a lot safer just expanding and just trying to deal with the game state as is. We'll see if that's the right choice because another poor man's recall may be getting set up here. Um, if Sharp was pushing right now, those four dropships would be utilized to try and break that attack. But with Sharp just sitting here trying to take a, a fourth base, I think the target will be the main base once again. Yeah, I think so. It looks like it's going to be that. Um, there is a floating eBay here and a vulture to spot this, but it doesn't really matter because he's going to attack two locations at the same time. There's three beautiful tanks, though, going to be denying those Dragoons, getting value on shutting down that expansion, at least. But now this recall coming, to, um, poor man's recall into main base. But a lot of storm damage potential, a lot of siege tanks getting caught up as well as SCVs. These are some pretty beautiful Sionic 
storms here from best getting probably like one of the highest value outputs from these units as possible especially considering they were scouted well in advance so doing great work here is best without too much investment now we're ahead of the supply by about 40 or so as this fourth base is only just now coming online from best and more and more infantry will be fielded by best to see if he can come up to this fourth base location and uh, break it before it can be reinforced sharp is busy he's actually cleaning up in the main base he hasn't set up uh, sufficient defense over here at the fourth zealot's just gonna get dropped on top of all of this and there's no like supply depots or anything built on this high ground not really any mines up here to deal with uh, a breakthrough and uh, we're gonna have to rotate a whole bunch of tanks storms in the natural as well best is playing one of the greatest games i've ever seen him play like this is so good from best he's just crushing it right now pulling yeah. apart sharp like no other like just think about the difference between Bisu playing against Sharp and uh, Best playing against him. It's like domination in terms of performance. Maybe it's due to the map and the difficulty of defending the main, but he's just ripped him to shreds. GG. Sharp taps out. Incredible performance here from Best. Oh my goodness. Soul Key versus Best on Monty Hall. This is not... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is not great for Zerg, man. I'm a little bit worried about Solki. Like, I was hoping he was going to come back and maybe clutch this out for us. But Monty Hall versus Best, who's looking to be on fire. If he yeah. gets a little bit unlucky here, he could be in a lot of trouble. I mean, even if he doesn't get unlucky, he could just, like, 9-9 nine, nine gate, make a guess, and mine out the wall. There's, like, yeah. so many things you can do to be annoying as Protoss here. Absolutely. Um, he's going to scout a, a Overlord through the middle. I hope that he jumps a drone over the middle path. Because I keep seeing games, like every time we've cast Monty Hall, I keep seeing Zerg players. Uh, oh, he missed it. He's trying to hop over. Um, you think he's going to build 9-9 gate? If he just lets this pylon continue to build. Okay, he cancels it. All right, so it's not going to be 9-9 gate, I don't think. Unless... Oh, boy. There it is. There it is. There's the 9-9 there, there's the gate. Ah, come on. I, I was going to say, every time we see the the Zerg player on this map, it's all, it seems to be always a, the Overlord heading in one direction. And then he goes for... Look, like he scouts in through the middle, and then he sends a drone to the north. He sees the gateway. All right. Yeah. I think he can handle this. There we go. He drops the spawning pool. Do you pull workers here and just kill this? Or you just wait for Lings to come in? You can't pull workers for this because they, they can cancel the, the gateway. Like, it's the same problem with mm. Terran versus Protoss. Like, if they pull the, the boys too early, they can just cancel the gateway and be ahead. It's a little right. bit awkward. But you can pull... I remember with the SCVs, you can pull, what, five or six SCVs? And it'll die yeah, before six. it gets anything out. Yeah, uh, providing that you attack it at when it's just about to warp in kind of thing. Otherwise, right. they can just cancel it if you send them too early. So you, the timing of it engaging is very important as well. Right. Sunken Colony going to be started here. He hops the probe over. Is he going to, like, pile on cannon this? Oh, my God. Oh, he's going to get so nasty. Uh, a gateway over yeah. here as well. Sulky is all busy dealing with this uh, gateway over by the uh, main base. And I don't think the Sunken Colony can hit anything. So he can just walk around the Sunken and go and attack the drones, I think. Yeah, it's not the best Sunken. It, it blocks him from leapfrogging cannons towards him along the south of the the creep to be annoying but it doesn't really accomplish much besides being point defense for the zerglings they will try and just jump on this pylon while two block uh, too many drones from going down so this might this might actually work if he gets the pylon quick enough here so you're gonna get the pylon right away and doesn't even get a second zealot out so i mean we're gonna cannon this but maybe we can stop it. I don't know if it's actually visible. No, it's not even visible. There, now he sees it. Just now. Two cannons on the way. 
He can't hop enough. I don't think he can hop enough stuff over this wall to save this. But he can just go to a different direction, right? He can hop over a drone in a different direction, let this die, and start another hatchery elsewhere. Right. Um, back at home, we've got the Cybernetics Core on the way, which is amazing for Best. It means he's going to be able to get his Corsair out really, really quick. But he's really not going to have a ground army, and maybe Soul Key can find a way into this game. Like, maybe he can, you know, build a spore colony or something like that and just keep his overlords alive. You know, he's got the overlord in the main base of Best right now. He can't counterattack with these lings, and he can't save this hatchery. But at least he knows what's coming here, and he can get a hatchery in a different location. It's not like this is at his natural blocking him from getting out. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one. I mean... I don't know exactly how this game's going to unfold. I would say Bisu has a slight advantage. Uh, he will be very far ahead on his tech as well. He might be able to do some DT shenanigans, uh, utilizing early Corsairs to try and like disrupt the plans of Solki going forward. But certainly Solki's not out of this game yet by any stretch of the word. So I'm very curious to see how this game is going to transpire. And it is going to be that fast Stargate, which does make a lot of sense here. This is a wild game, man. It looks like we're going to have best mine out the top patches because he's already got cannons on that side. He knows that yeah. we're not going to see Soul Key uh, come from that direction. So maybe he can just take a Nexus, uh, you know, use the Corsairs to the nice scouting of that and um, use the cannons to stop anything coming from ground to punish this. Could even send a uh, probe down here once again and just build another cannon in range of the uh, the mineral patches. But it seems like we are going to be able to mine this out, and maybe Sulky can do some sort of a counter attack to, to to stop this. He will have to build. Oh, he's got a spire on the way. Look at that. Sulky going to get the spire out. Is he going to have it in time though to save his overlords? Definitely not. I mean, I imagine that this overlord here is for sure going to die, and I imagine at least one additional overlord will die, as long as as long as long he can't hide them well enough. Right. So, I was expecting some sort of spore colony, but this is a little bit more robust. Having the spire out, you know, there's a lot more options with that play. Um, however, it, it is a little bit harder. It takes longer to come online. And we are going to end up losing some more economy here. The supplies are looking pretty even, but this tech is just now coming into play. And Bess is going to get some damage going for sure. Oh, the Spire is so close. I guess he just loses this one, Overlord. I guess he, he will well, lose this one Corsair and then the other. Yeah, yeah. Over by the main or over by the natural there. He's going to lose that Overlord as well, probably, unless it gets hidden really, really well. Running over here. It's going to kill the cannons. Okay, this is pretty good. There's two cannons over here by the, the Nexus, but if there's more links coming out, maybe he can overwhelm that. Yeah, I mean, it was a great choice from um, Solki here to just quickly mine out this lane that the cannons are on because he probably identified correctly that this is where the expansion would be and his overlord confirmed that. He might be able to intercept on this Corsair. This could be huge for Solki. At the very least, he's forcing it to turn around. He's trying to get the other pair of Scourge up here to catch this other one that's trying to snag this overlord kill. He might be able to now use these to intercept the previous Corsair. If he can at least get one of these Corsairs, that would be a pretty big win for him. Yeah, it's likely he'll be using uh, Mutalist this game to try and bring himself uh, into a good position. Uh, he has just about got that Corsair. Oh my god, so close. He has this second gas, right? He's mining gas at the natural. Oh, a run by into the main. There is one cannon here, though, unfortunately. Maybe he can pick off a few buildings at the periphery, but eventually best will hold that i mean this is this is really really good play from soul key i'm, I'm loving this game right gas. now it's crazy he can hit the gas with those links oh he can you think he can hit the gas at the top well he can hit and the, the oh the core and we don't have a gateway there's no gateway here at all he's gonna have to pull probes to deal with this and soul key is actually gonna get this building can he actually prevent the plus one if he prevents the plus one and gets armor of his own he's gonna be able to hold his uh, he's going to be able to fight really, really well against these Corsairs. This could actually change the game completely. Is he going to get the core? He's going for it. Just targeting it down. He gets it. No plus one. 
Wow, this is kind of crazy. And he can still go to work on some of these other buildings. Star Stargate is also a big choice here. I think he can uh, kill that gas with just a, like two or three lings hitting from the very northeast of that gas. I'm not entirely sure about the range. I think he can still hit the gas, but that won't be an issue anymore with this other cannon finishing up. But really nice play from Sulky. Again, a little bit of a tactical edge here. Um, you'll be confirming this gateway that's being built in the back of the base as well. Um, with this mutilist count starting to come online, he might be able to like slowly edge his way into a victory here. He's going to be going up to four bases as well, so even if he doesn't like find a way of winning the game anytime soon, as long as he just stays alive, eventually he might be able to close this out. I would love to see Muta armor uh, coming yeah. from Soul Key right now. Oh, a sneaky nexus in the center left. We haven't seen a hidden nexus for a long time, but I think this is yeah. a good... This is a really nice time to, to throw that down to just go ahead and uh, drop a sneaky nexus uh, what are the chances that you actually end up scouting this as a zerg I mean it's not great we've Maybe got scourge flying around a lot but uh, there's a good chance that this goes unscouted and that this helps best to stabilize this position here yeah, and he has got that plus one carapace on the uh, air units now. So nice. Key. So nice little air advisor. I mean, plus one is now back on the way again after rebuilding that core. But it will be a little bit of time before that gets online. So Soki's kind of sitting pretty and just going to macro up Whoa. now, knowing that he's in a pretty good spot. Oh, double robo. It's going to be reverse air. Well, that's crazy because we're going to have uh, armor advantage. We're going to have upgrade advantage on the Mutas and Scourge. So... Uh, the chances that best can t like secure full air control is kind of low i think this is a lot of corsairs but with this armor and this number of muta plus scourge i don't yeah. think you can take a fight and you have to rest air control away from the zerg player if you want to make uh this type of play work right if you want to go double robo you have to be able to win this fight in the air the one but the one thing going for him is that he's already setting up the third so if he's already got the third secured he's okay look at this big fleet of scourge diving in don't connect too well on those corsairs only killing a few of them so still seven remaining a few of them softened up though he can just refill on scourge gradually and go for in for round two but uh, yeah, the, the main trick is that he's got this third base uh, snuck out already. So the main issue with Reva Ser is as long as you can prevent the Protoss player from expanding and keep him on two base, you're, you're, you're pretty much fine. But the fact that he's already got the third base up here is a little bit of a weird situation for Soul Key Beast. You may be able to surprise him if he doesn't find this for some time. Well, the third base is up, but Soul Key already taking his fifth base. And he's yeah. mining so much gas, he can make an insane amount of Scourge. He will be able to force you into fights, right? There's yeah, no yeah. option of just, you know, ignoring that because the cannons will go down. Fleet Beacon on the way. He wants to get into uh, more air upgrades for sure. I doubt this is for carrier or anything. He will probably just wants to get, uh, you know, plus two, plus three on these Corsairs. Plus one advantage here still for Soul Key. If he has plus two on the way, I think that would be the right play. Well, I imagine. D web maybe. Oh yeah, for the yeah. for the Reaver um, to protect the Reavers. I mean, it's not going to help you much. Uh, oh, if if he's just going air, but look at this, another probe sneaking out on the map. He's going to actually try and take another hidden base. And you're absolutely right, Shun, when you talk about, you know, Reaver's there, the problem being, uh, you know, taking extra bases and getting them online, especially the third. But, I mean, he's already solved that problem and he's getting into another base over here. If this doesn't go, if this goes unscouted, we're going to see some fireworks in this game. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, and Soki's already got on five bases as well. So, oh, it looks like Soki might hunt down this base in the top right though he's kind of sniffed it out yeah so that's something he finds it that's huge he's gonna be able to kill this and he's got so many scourge the corsairs can't contest it all right gonna lose some more corsairs like you just see how powerful that plus one armor is it, yeah. being able to connect with those uh overwhelming numbers of corsairs is just not a typical situation where you've got uh, uh upgrade advantage over the Protoss player in the air. That is just not a standard situation at all. And Beast is not, or Best is not used to it. 
He expects those Corsairs to trade well, and they just they just can't. Now Sulky sending out a drone over here to try and take another base. He's finally going to scout that this one has been uh, held, but... I mean, there's no way to break this right now, right? This is this is way too many Corsairs, way too many cannons yeah, at this location. that's for sure. I don't think... He wants to try and intercept the Corsairs away from the cannons. He definitely doesn't want to oh, fight on top the of shuttle. cannons right now. But he might get the shuttle. He might get the shuttle, though. That's the big thing here. If he can start to shut down the Reavers, then there's no real counterplay available to Best anymore. He's got the Reavers kind of pinned down at this point in time. But look at this massive cannon transition in the right side. But Mutilus scouts it. He's trying to desperately get some point defense set up over here that he can work with but already some units on the way to do a massive fleet of scourge are going to be connecting with this course there's only six remaining now so this is getting to a dangerous point for best if he loses just a single more corsair he's got no hope of gunning down the scourge anymore and he, sulky's just going to run away with the air superiority well this is insane so many yeah. cannons over here at this fourth base for best but uh, this is just typical cheeky Protoss play. Uh, you see this on all the time on ladder. There's a greater spire. Oh, you'll love to see nice. it. Jun. I was just thinking. I was just thinking. Guardians. That's crazy. I mean, and he also has devourers to stack them um, onto the 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 packs of corsairs. Is very strong as well. Just like one or two devourers is really good. Yeah, it's insanely strong and. He's definitely going to go for that play. Oh, he kills the probe. That's huge. Nice. He prevents the yeah. nexus and kills the probe. All these cannons up here are worthless now. Unless he can get another shuttle over there, drop another probe. That's going to take some time. It's going to slow down best by quite a lot. And meanwhile, he's transitioning. He's going to get into that hive play. Um, his upgrades are going to be slowed down. I don't know if we have a second spire. I would love to see if we have a second spire to keep those upgrades rolling because eventually he's going to catch up in the upgrade, uh, the, the curve here in this game. Yeah. Might be able to catch this Wait. shuttle. Oh, he is going to get this. Yeah, no way to escape from here. It will eventually go down. And where is he going to end up dropping that? I guess right in the mineral line, try to kill a couple more workers. But eventually this will go down. And a Hydra attack over towards the center left is going to clean this up. Dude, Bess is getting outplayed. Soul this is just going to take this. Yeah, it looks like it. There's even a pair of Scourge to catch this shell up here. It's kind of wild, like how on top of everything Soul is. Really true champion tier play here from uh, him. I'm really impressed. Like, it was looking like he was just going to get absolutely decimated by Best in the early game. And he's really turned this around. But there's so many Corsairs. Maybe he can still find something in this game as Best. If he can keep mowing down all the Scourge before they connect, maybe he can run away with the game. There's a kind of crazy amount um, of Corsairs he's got. But there are now a lot of Hydras and some Devourers being made devourers are the ultimate counter to these corsairs in the air we're going to be slowing down those incredibly quick attacks and adding damage to every shot from our mutas every glaive bounce is going to deal extra damage as well due to those acid spores so many reavers over here at this third base but they're not going to help out against this primarily air army from Soul key. That is a lot of devour. Is this too many devourers, Shun? Do we need this many? <laughs> it's almost too many devourers, yeah, but I guess they won't die anytime soon, and they'll certainly stack up a lot of acid spores of just a couple of volleys, so you'll certainly get some value out of them. It's not usually the best unit to build, but in these kind of weird game states, you certainly will find a lot more value out of them than usual. I don't even That's remember the last time I saw a devourer in a, a you know, ZVP. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, semi-island maps do kind of like, increase the odds of that happening because of these kind of weird game states we find. But yeah, usually you will not see this unit at all. Well, here we go. Pushing forward. He's going to go ahead and take the engage with the Hydras. That's a lot of Reavers, though. Here we go. The uh, Acid Spore is going to get laid down on a lot of these Corsairs. You cannot fight this with the Hydras underneath. They're going to deal so much damage. No mutas though with this and usually you want to pair a few mutas in this army So once the acid spores go down those glaives are gonna deal extra damage It's coming back in yeah. once again laying down some more acid spores Where are the uh, uh, mutas? Okay, he's actually coming in with scourge right now. I think it's not the greatest to fight just pure uh, Corsair with pure devour you need something else mixed in to take advantage of the acid spore damage 
But when the S's spores are stacked, obviously they'll attack so slowly the Scourge have more value. But yeah, you're right. You kind of want to like mix in a little bit of DPS from like some muters or something because yeah, the, the way the, the acid spores work is they each each acid spore up to a total of nine max like increases the damage each unit um, does to it. So every mutalisk glaive bounds every hydralisk acid spore does increase damage relative to how many stacks it's got and looks like best is just gonna tap out here he's kind of been whittled down to a nub really impressive stuff from sulky giving a true representation of the zerg squad that we've been looking for recently oh thank goodness sulky bringing it back for us i was getting really scared when i saw that 99 gate in his main base that he was gonna end up falling yeah. apart but thank god sulky bringing it back for us he's gonna go up against either royal or light next and only shuttle remains for the protoss team what a map for this matchup kickback with the soul key versus light this is going to be a wild one and maybe a preview into some ssl games down the line really wonder how the players are going to approach tvp uh, tvz on this map it's kind of a wild one shun yeah i mean i do feel it's like a little bit terran favored in some respects can be a little bit challenging for Zerg to still secure that four gases, even though they get the three so easily. So I think there's a lot of room here for Terrans to abuse Zergs on, especially getting access to a third gas so easily themselves. I don't know how that's going to pan out in the SSL. I imagine these players will keep developing strategies for these maps as they get more and more experience on them. But so far, it does seem like the map pool is slightly skewed more towards Terran than usually. This is a very wide choke in the natural. Pretty hard to hold on uh, to those bases in the bottom left, but even harder to hold that and another location around the map. And if you decide to take a high ground base somewhere else out on the map, you're just not going to get as much bang for your buck. All of these gas geysers are very low in terms of their yield, in terms of the amount of gas that you can mine out of those before they go extinct pretty rough map for sure for sulky but we saw some really creative stuff last week out of yeah shine on this map and i'm hoping that we'll get something similar here from sulky as well yeah, I'm hoping we see a different result because Shine didn't fare well and I kind of feel like the map was a little bit to fault for that as well. It, it does seem a little bit tricky for Zergs and I mean look at the wall in for Ter as well. You get a very nice snug wall in. There's some wall ins where you at least have like a, a one hole to worry about that you have to block with an SCV or Marine. But with, with here, I mean you can block off your entire three bases of just your standard wall in. I mean there's a lot of things afforded to Terran on this map. He's just going to wall in very easily. Fully tight wall here. Can't get through. Sulky wanted to grab some minerals off of that one patch. And I don't... I'm not clear exactly how many minerals there are in that stack. But Light's not going to allow that to happen. He doesn't want that to be opened here just yet. Gets inside the natural. Sees what Sulky's cooking. He's got the layer on the way. He hasn't built even a single pair of lings so far. But I don't see any divergence from normal play here just yet. What does Sulky have in mind? Where is he going to go from here? Is he going to be forced to defend with sunken colonies? Is he going to go for his regular ling muta style and try to battle light on the map and take bases just you know here and there see if he can get something online while defending with ling muta i i'm not sure what we're gonna see well, that's what i think I, I i think we'll see the latter i think we'll see more or less his usual style um even though it's possible to try and take advantage of this this map the way it is set up if, if you if, if you get too greedy it obviously opens up windows for standard timings to punish you again so he has to kind of respect light and he knows that light is a very low economy terran he does cut a lot of scvs to really get a two base timing as strong as possible so he knows look at this it's actually gonna be a fast lurker build 
from Solki here. So we may see like a, a very fast lurker bust. He may even have something crazier planned of like a three centimeter drop as well to follow it up. Um, but certainly opening up a little bit stranger. You usually don't go for lurkers, but lurkers can work very well against a wall in because it's not as easy to build bunkers to fortify yourself, even if you do scout this. So the three centimeter drop, what Shun is talking about, is a lurker drop without overlord speed. And you go up to a wall yeah. like this one we see on screen, and uh, with your one overlord, try to quickly. Oh, well, not quickly, but uh, you know, pick up an over, or pick up some lurkers and try to just hop over that wall with a very slow overlord. You can only move about three centimeters at a time, so uh, that's why it's called the three centimeter drop. A oh my goodness. Look at this. Full mech play from Light. And he's going to go into an armory right away. Will he be able to sniff out this drop? I think... Oh my god. He's going to drop with this one super low overlord? This overlord took so much damage. And he's going to make lurkers here and try to drop into that base? Well, he, That's he might crazy. not drop in. He, he might not be dropping. He might just be hiding them here to morph to run up to the wall. So Maybe. If, he, he, if he does go for a drop tech, it might be like a, a later drop. He might first try and like lay siege to the... That's a good catch on that vulture as well. If he just... He could just lay siege to the natural to pressure the front and then have a uh, drop finishing up to use this overlord at the natural expansion to three centimeter drop as an aftermath but i'm not sure if he's even planning on dropping he might just try and bust the front here straight up that's kind of what it's looking like now with this many lings popping out seems like he just wants to try to break through one of these uh, supply depots and then yeah. follow up with the um lings coming through there's only two Goliaths here that just popped out, and there's no uh, vision at all. There's no, no detection at all. He's just going to bust right through the wall. All the Marines go down. The uh, Goliaths are starting to fall as well. If he kills this one turret, this game is over. There's nothing here to scout. We don't have a, an academy at all. There's no tank or anything. He's trying to focus down these uh, lurkers. My goodness, this worked a trick so here so good. for soul key My wow just blind countered light with this lurker bust like one of the, the things that mech is weak to is very early lurker busts so absolutely crazy stuff from soul key to have a complete read on light in this situation and just pull him apart now it's just one player apiece it's going to be soul key versus shuttle coming up and then just royal waiting in the wings Shuttle versus Sulky on Pantheon. Think Shuttle stands any chance of taking down Sulky here? <laughs> I mean, if I had to put money on it, I would just be like throwing money at Sulky and asking if I can send more. But um, if, if you gave me odds of like, I don't know, like 10 to 1 on Shuttle, maybe you'd tempt me, but I don't know. Like. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but like Shuttle has been kind of a little bit of a joke of the community. I mean, there was people like effort, like killing his own drone at the start of the game and still being able to beat him in a, a PVZ. So yeah, like the skill difference is noticeable. I'm hoping that he's rectified some of those issues and he's less of a laughing stock now as he was in recent times. Uh, that remains to be seen. I, mean, I would love to see a better showing from Shuttle. He, he has been able to like, you know, destroy players on Flash's caliber in the past. It's just been so long and since we've seen him on form. Well, this is the very first season in a long time. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many seasons it's been, but First season in quite some time that Shuttle did not make it into the ASL. Uh, he was knocked out in the qualifier by I don't know who. Um, can't quite uh, recall uh, who had the pleasure of knocking out Shuttle, but I think he'll be missed, right? Like he's he's been in yeah. for so long. Despite being the laughing stock, I mean the amount of ASLs he's made it into is is sizable. It's it's pretty impressive. And he is quite the character as well. Great stage presence. Uh, excellent yeah. in interviews. Very, very funny guy. 
Um, he's fun to have around, that's for sure. It's a shame that he doesn't make it in. Um, yeah. He, he does seem to be struggling as of late, but he is. what's so strange about it is he is one of the few players that has the amount of experience that he does and is still struggling. So it's, it, he seems to be one of the unfortunate ones. I'm hoping he can turn that around. Yeah, he's got like a, a class clown vibe. It's not that the players are really disrespecting him as a player. Like, I feel like er everyone's got to respect someone who's made it into the ASL as many times as he has, but... Uh, he's just a bit of a goof. He is you know? a bit of a goof, yeah. And I think that's why um, players kind of clown on him. He, he tends to not perform too well uh, in pro league. But he still has a pretty high win rate overall for his team, which is kind of hilarious. And uh, it is quite funny listening to him or watching him play in Pro League. And uh, he has a, a very funny um, way of coming back into the chat after losing a game. It's so typical. Uh, Shuttle will, you know, try to perform. And then when he comes back, he's so timid and quiet until... <laughs> uh, people say, it's okay, sh it's okay, Shuttle. Uh, don't worry about it. And then he starts talking again. <laughs> and then he's back to his normal, goofy self. Yeah. <laughs> he's certainly a character. Yeah. And definitely a good streaming personality kind of type. You know, you, you like to see the guy interact with the world. It's just funny. Even if he's not performing at his best, it's only entertaining him around. Oh, might be able to get a good surround on this cell. It needs to be careful. It does manage to get... This is not blocked at the bottom, though. The probe's not in great position. This could be a bit of a nightmare for Shuttle now. This cell is completely surrounded. will be ice. There might be another one popping out in just a few seconds here, but it won't be long since other Zealot is isolated and killed as well. There's additional Zerglings arriving as well. This will escalate into a bigger and bigger problem for him to solve, and the Zealot's going to be popping out when it can be surrounded by these Lings now. Well, um, I think he's uh, going to have some more things to apologize for here to his Protoss squad when he gets back into the chat. Um, not the greatest performance out of Shuttle, that is for sure. This is not the shuttle that's made it into the ASL all these times. This is uh, the clown shuttle that uh, we're used to watching the other pro players laugh at. Uh, and he is just about to get taken down by Soul Key, no doubt about it. Um, just streams of links coming in here. Zergling in the main got three kills on it. One zealot and all these probes dealing with a mass of links. And GG will have to be called here. Shuttle just kind of processing the loss. Uh, as more and more links flood across, though, there's just, there's no hope left. GG. GG. Ah, shuttle. What a I shame, mean, my friend. I was kind of expecting it, though, but it is a bit of a shame, unfortunately. <laughs> he is the class clown that, you know, doesn't revise for tests, so when it comes down to exam time, he's not exactly going to be acing it, whereas uh, a nice little nerd like Sulky is pushing his glasses up, and he's absolutely acing that thing. Yeah, he's not going to let you copy off of his test, either. He's going to be nope. holding all the answers for himself. Sulky going to move forward. Royal is the final challenge here. Can Sulky run it back? Take down every player here. This would be incredibly impressive. Oh, who, who did he not take? He didn't take out Sharp, right? Or Bisu. Bisu got taken out by Sharp. Sharp got taken out by Best. So there's no chance of an all kill, unfortunately, but still a very impressive run for Soul Key if he manages to take out Royal here. Royal, the final boss of Terran. Let's see what happens. Shun, aren't you happy you didn't take that uh, 10 to 1 bet? I'm very happy, and I, I I was right to be hesitant to even want to think consider taking that 10 to 1 bet, as you can see. Shuttle just not showing up today, and Soul Key is on fire. He's here in the top left-hand corner. Royal in the bottom right. Minstrel is the final map, and another kind of tough Zerg map, I would say. Yeah, it is a very kind of tough um, map for Zerg, all things considered. There are maybe a few windows in the game state where there's an advantage to these lanes for Zerg, but it's it's far and few between and very hard to extract the juice out of that particular fruit. So unfortunately, it does seem like Zergs are having a little bit of a hard time on some of these maps, this one in particular. 
Whenever you have a third base that's not on high ground and has multiple paths into it, it's, oh, it's, it's tough to hold on. Yeah. yeah. Sulky is the type of player who can make that work when it comes to just, you know, Mutalisk and Ling control, but this is not one of those wide open center maps like a Pantheon, like a, right. a Vermeer or something like that, where you've just got lots of space to move around and try to get flanks and, you know, try to pull apart and, and surround that Marine Medic army. Here, we've just got plenty of lanes with lots of walls. Royal will be able to move through without being, you know, too scared of getting surrounded. This first drone really, really early uh, sent out across the map is going to confirm that there's no eight rocks on the way. And if there was like a CC first here, he would be able to harass the heck out of these SCVs. But with just the standard play from Royal, he's not going to get too, too much. He actually tries to get into the main, but gets blocked. Royal going to prevent that from getting up in there. Not really much to well, see in that main, but uh, he would like to scout and see if there was a gas on the way. I do really like the slightly early drone scout on two player maps because it, it does force at the very least an SCV to come off the line to chase the drone, which is kind of compensating for you committing to the drone scout in of itself. So you're kind of like forcing the Terran to pay for your drone scout, which is a nice little compensation, especially if you're thinking more economically ahead like Sulky always does. He's almost always optimizing his economy relative to the opposing player. So everything is very well calculated out to always try and give himself as big of an economic edge as possible yeah it's really smart as well just getting that information early on you can eliminate so yeah. many different builds uh, and potential builds that can come out and it's not easy to get an overlord over the natural here right we, we've got to send it way no. around uh, and there are opportunities for roll to snipe that as it comes over some of these uh, low ground areas so Sending out that drone just kind of cleans up the build quite a bit. It, it fills in some gaps of information that Solaki would otherwise have. And he's got some links out here in the front. We've got a naked marine push across the map, but it's all been scouted by Solaki. He shouldn't lose any links here. And we'll pull back no. just in time. This is this has become very traditional of Terrans in recent times. Like it seems like the four naked marine move out is becoming a new standard in the meta because they've identified this, this point of weakness in the Zergs builds where they're trying to rely on just two or four Zerglings and a lot of the times they're chasing an SCV scout or not in position to get on top of those marines quick enough and you can just lose drones right away. Yeah, absolutely. Just sneaking in like we saw Sharp do it already. Uh, this week of KCM, right? His match versus action, getting behind yeah. those mineral patches, how much damage he ended up getting done was kind of insurmountable for action to to deal with. So uh, the, there's always potential with these move outs. There's always potential for damage going onto the Terran as well. If those Marines get surrounded and killed, if you're a little bit too aggressive, if you're not on top of your scouting with the SCV and figuring out how many lings are being made and where they're at, yeah. you could be in a lot of trouble. These Terran players have gotten really, really good at mitigating that though. Being on top of things with their SCV and always looking for opportunities to just go in with those Marines when they're out on the map. Absolutely, and usually the stars align when you can do it because if you get the SCV scout in and confirm that it's an opportunity to be had, you also have the SCV scout in the main base that might now become the target of those lings. So they kind of like, you know, go to hunt down this SCV and open up the drones to be sniped in the natural. So it kind of lines up really nicely as well. Uh, when you do get the SCV in the main base, sometimes there's a lot of damage potential there and you don't have to commit to it. You just keep the Marines like halfway across the map and if you can't go for it, you just pull back. And it's a nice little uh, intricacy to the early game that I, I like to see develop in the TVZ meta. It does kind of like shift around a lot and eventually come full circle with players, you know, end up using similar tactics that they did originally. Solky's got me worried here, man. Royal is stimming and running across the map. The sunken colony is not done. Uh, uh, this is this is a pretty late sunken. It's got to be Lings. Okay, Muta is actually popping out. We've got a what is this? A, a bunker? Yeah, a bunker here. Gonna be thrown down. Uh, no turret. A turret at the front. That's kind of funny. He will cancel out. Nice snipe on that. Loses one Muta. 
but I mean, it doesn't look like he's going to take much more damage than this. Great pull up back from the Soul Key, keeping that alive. A excellent handling of this kind of crazy situation. Yeah, really great composure there. Like a lot of Zerg players would have fumbled the ball, lost a muter or something, and like, you know, it wouldn't have gone so cleanly. But the fact that he was in a dire situation, they didn't lose really any drones and didn't even lose the muter as well. Like, it's very impressive stuff. And now it looks like Royal might be on the back foot a little bit because only one medic, or sorry, two medics to just a small handful of Marines. Only like one turret finished in these production areas. So still room to come in here with the links and abuse while pinning the Marines on the ramp. The links can come in and start clearing up this turret, opening up this position. Now these two depots are kind of dead in the water here, opening up Royal to further damage. He's not going to be supply blocked uh, by much, at least, but it's still going to be a bit of a nightmare situation not to be able to produce units for a few seconds. Spiraling out of control right now. Royal's losing his uh, depots and not being able to build anything right now when all the pressure is on him. Nice job pulling back those medics and marines, not allowing that... Uh, shot there from the mutas, but this is dire right now for Royal. I'm surprised we're not seeing like bunkers being made, you know, more turrets being thrown down. He's got to survive this really precarious situation. His natural is under threat. He's building Marines at the back, but they're actually caught. He cannot move. If he builds Marines back there, they can't get out. So he's kind of uh, screwing himself over in that way, and he's going to end up losing the starport. Solki is seconds away from closing this out. Yeah, this is absolute insanity. Stalling out the tech is big news as well. He's trying to secure the victory by getting the links into natural expansion. Now pouncing on top of the Marines that were sent to intercept that. And not many Marines are remaining. There's enough Mutaling to clean this up. It's looking like it's going to be a very quick victory here from Solki. Turning things around from the Zerg squad. It's really impressive stuff from him. I don't think there's a way of Royal stabilizing here. Unless Solki just suddenly decides to throw the game. All he's got to do is just kill Marines. Send links to clean up those turrets and keep on top of the star and it's pretty much GG here. Yeah, there's nothing that Royal can do at this point. A great attempt into the natural, the stim and run in uh, with that two ranks play. I mean, it almost managed to work. Sulky was so close to dying there, but he walked that knife's edge and with the counter attack, pulling apart Royal with real professionalism and careful consideration Solki takes home the prize here. He brings back his squad from the brink of defeat. Both Queen and Action got taken out immediately, not even putting a kill on the board, and Solki clutches it out. Okay, Shun, here we are once again, week number one. No spoiler uh, shield this time, guys. We made it all the way to the end, all nine games. I honestly... I am so impressed with Soul Key. I didn't think I could be more impressed, but his composure this week was incredible to witness. Yeah, no, and that's what it takes to be at the, the champion level. It, it's not just your ability to play great games. It's your ability to adapt to any situation and have that kind of composure where you can turn an, un an unpredictable and volatile scenario into an advantageous one. Like with, with that defense on the sun combusted, he was moments away from catastrophe. He could just lose the game straight up or he could lose drones or he could lose one or two muters. It doesn't matter. If anything went wrong there. He wouldn't have been able to put on the kind of pressure that he needed to close out the game. So it's kind of crazy the levels of composure you, you have to have at this level to be able to do what he does. But he somehow seems to do it time and time again, even when challenged by the best of these players. I really feel like we saw his full range this week as well, right? We yeah, saw yeah. his cheese play, like we were talking about, a champion level player. You need to have cheeses that you can throw in every once in a right. while. He brought it out versus light, showed us a very nice cheesy lurker bust to take him down. Uh, we saw like complete standard play from him versus Royal in that last one, just dismantles. Uh, his opponent, and then we had, uh, you know, him get getting Hall. cheese. Yeah, on Monty Hall, he <laughs> got into a, like a weird cheesy situation where he had to defend a, a crazy cheese from Best. Yeah, and his defensive play was immaculate. So we saw the full range of play of Sulky here. It was so much fun. Um, anything last to say there, Shun? 
I was just so impressed with Sulky. I mean, even that game against Best, for example, like he got the third base up for free, did Best. So the fact that he managed to defeat Reva Ser so comfortably after the opening cheese and even like, you know, managed to utilize Devourers. So like, yeah, like you say, really stretching his limits in terms of what range of play was required to get the job done, but managed to hand it like an absolute pro and look cool while doing it. So we can't really thank him enough for give, providing us these amazing games. And we're really happy to be bringing you this great KCM content. And I'm really excited going into the season now. Yeah, it should be a great season. That game on versus best, I mean, that one was so incredible. So impressed with his performance against Reverse there. But maybe it comes down to the snipe on his upgrade, right? Getting that yeah. kill on the uh, Cybernetic cool. Core. I think that changed the game, really. The plus oh, sure, one being sure. denied. And then getting ahead on the upgrades, it made it so hard for Best to take any fights. It made it so yeah. difficult for him to uh, kill the Scourge before they connected. He just kept losing Corsairs over and over again, was never able to wrest control of the air away from Soul Key. Soul Key just expanding and expanding and taking more gases and getting more. Racing into Mutus plus two Carapace. Just really good stuff. Very, very impressed with his play. That's really the story of this week. Also, Sharp, too, right? Sharp played some mm -hmm. amazing games this week, didn't he? Yeah, Sharp played pretty out of his mind, actually. I've been really impressed. My eyes are going to be on him uh, in the future, that's for sure. Um, shame we didn't see anything better out of Shuttle. Um, although, I guess the bar is now in hell, so I'm sure it won't be hard <laughs> for him to impress us now, at least. He's got that going for him. Right, he likes to, to lower the bar so that he can... Uh... Impress. <laughs> He's that type yeah. of guy for sure. Well, he wants that low hanging fruit, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> always a, a fun guy to joke around about, but he is a serious contender. It's just he's always got a smile on his face when he's doing so. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, that's it for this week of KCM, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to hit the links uh, down below. Go check out Shun's channel. Uh, also, uh, head over to KCM and congratulate him on another uh, season here, season four. Four seasons a year. And we are so blessed, Shun. I can't wait for this one. And, of course, all the future KCMs we're going to be covering. Uh, you and I just going yep. about our business. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you in the next week.